Welcome back, Applied English. Let's wrap up this lesson by working through our next set of 10 vocabulary words. I'm hoping that by having verbs under our belt, um, by working through that verbs, uh, notes, and practice little activity that we just did, it'll make uh, vocabulary a little bit easier for you this time around. Really, after these next two weeks, really as we cover all the parts of speech, I'm hoping that vocab becomes a lot easier for you for the rest of the semester as well. Um, it's not a bad idea to set some goals for vocabulary based on how you did on our uh, first unit test because we will be doing more of those quiz type activities in the coming weeks. Starting next week, um, we'll finish off next week before parent-teacher conferences with our next vocabulary quiz. So I'll be able to discuss um, just how you've grown in vocabulary from point A to point B with your parents or guardians too. Little preview of our next lesson. Our next lesson looks a lot like this one. In our next one, we will cover more notes. We'll cover uh, nouns and pronouns first. And then we'll also do a little bit of a, a, an activity with writing complete sentences too, because you'll have everything you need to write sentences that um, have both subjects and verbs. We'll cover objects as well, uh, just to help you diversify your sentences a bit too. Let's get it with vocab. And I got to size this down a bit. There we go. So our next vocabulary set, as you'll see, is vocab set A through E. I got to see if I can get all these on the screen together. Maybe not at the same time. Um, but as you notice, we've got 10 words once again. Since we're not reading anything right now, um, I just wanted to pull them from the alphabet. Um, these are words that are ranked as being um, good ones for um, high schoolers to know. In fact, I think I pulled these from a list called 100 words every eighth grade graduate should know. Um, those books are written at a pretty high level, so I don't know what eighth graders are talking about here, so to speak. But these are good words um, for all of us to have in our vocabulary. You'll notice on our list here, we've got four verbs. So we just learned verbs. Notice that we've got four. We'll see if we can maybe pair these first and then do the rest using our dictionary. We have a verb titled to, or defined as to capture one's full attention or to keep one highly interested, to oppose something or to push back to move or use something in an aggressive way, or to drive away, scatter, or defeat. Uh, since we just learned verbs, let's maybe see if we can uh, start putting those together right now. And then from there, um, we'll see what else we can fill in. One of the verbs that really stuck out to me is to oppose something or to push back. I wonder if I can find a word on our list that means that. <laughs> to oppose something. Ah. Noticing counter right here. Now the word counter is tricky, right? Maybe the first thing you think of is the noun, like a kitchen counter kind of thing. But here it's a verb. To oppose something or to push back is to counter. And just as a sign to myself, I'm going to strike that through just to practice my process of elimination. Strike through. I know I won't use that one again. Maybe I can do one more verb on this list. I've got three more. To drive away, scatter, or defeat. That one, I know, that's, I think my best one there is going to be dispel as well. To drive away, scatter, or defeat is going to be dispel. Now, those ones are just ones that I happen to know were verbs. Obviously, I have two more on my list to use, but they're not as easy to define just uh, without a dictionary, so I'll use a dictionary for them. As a reminder, another good strategy is to see what I can uh, define without even looking at it, or without even looking at a dictionary as well. What's left? I think I have got two nouns, an enemy or opponent, and a steep cliff or a lie designed to trick someone. I also have, I think, four adjectives, skillful and effective, wary, anxious, or nervous, extremely noticeable or obvious, and stimulating, creating joy or excitement. As I look at the list one more time, are there any that I happen to know without using a dictionary? Exhilarating looks, looks familiar to me. I know it's an adjective. It's not skillful or anxious or noticeable, it's stimulating. Exhilarating, there we go. I might say, my sentence might say something like, um, we saw an extremely exhilarating sunset yesterday, right? Um, it, it was such a beautiful sunset that it stimulated our senses and made us excited. I'll cross that one out too. So I've got seven more to define. Let, don't mind me as I just pull open my dictionary here and see what else I can find. I'm just going to start by going down the list using adversary first. Adversary definition. And once again, I'm not the biggest fan of, of Google's dictionary, so I'm going to go straight to Merriam-Webster, my favorite one. Adversary. There's our definition, a noun. One who contends with, opposes, or resists an enemy or opponent. I think I remember seeing that on my list. 
an enemy or opponent. There it is. Now, one of the nice things on this list, notice that I only have two nouns. So my other noun is going to be, or automatically goes to that last answer there. And I strike this one through from my own viewpoint. We'll just keep going down the line. Apprehensive is next. Bye-bye, Spotify. And just keep going down the list. Apprehensive. An adjective, viewing the future with anxiety or alarm, feeling or showing fear about the future, discerning, having awareness or knowledge. I'm going to see if I have something about anxiety or fear on my list. Apprehensive. Wary, anxious, or nervous about a future event is apprehensive. I can tell that some of you are apprehensive about taking your test in our classroom last week, although most students did pretty well on that. Get rid of apprehensive. Bluff. Bluff. Now, I'm noticing first, bluff is an adjective. Having a broad, flattened front, rising steeply. I don't remember seeing anything like that. Skillful and effective, no. Extremely noticeable, no. Bluff is one of those words that has a lot of definitions. So maybe what I'll do is I'll come back to that later once I have more eliminated. We'll come back to bluff. Brandish. A verb, to shake or wave something menacingly like a weapon, to exhibit in an ostentatious or aggressive manner. It's a verb. Let's see, to capture one's full attention, no. To move or use something in an aggressive way, there it is, brandish. Pro tip for you guys, the word brandish is almost always used to describe how someone moves a weapon. The soldier brandished his sword at his enemy, something like that. It means to like shake a weapon at someone to, to threaten them. Just a great word to add to your vocabulary, once again. Strike you through. Again, I'm only using strike through just as a visual for me to know what's left. Conspicuous is next. This is a little pro tip, but I know that words ending in O-U-S are typically adver or adjectives. Let's see if I can find one. It's either going to mean skillful and effective, or extremely noticeable or obvious. Let's see. Conspicuous. Adjective. Obvious. Attracting attention. Extremely noticeable or obvious. There it is. Conspicuous. There it is. I'm running out of I'm running out of uh, words here. So let's eliminate that. Boom. Deft is next. Deft. Characterized by facility and skill, I see that it's an adjective. I think I only have one adjective left, skillful and effective. Deft. Milwaukee Lutheran has some deft English teachers, some skillful English teachers. And gross and bluff are all that's left. So let's see. One is a verb to capture one's full attention. The other is a noun, a steep cliff or a lie designed to trick someone. I know bluff can be either a noun or a verb, so I'm going to move to engross next. And gross. It is a verb to copy or write in large hand, to purchase large quantities of, to engage the whole attention of, or occupy completely. That one is going to be to capture one's full attention. And gross. And the, all that leaves left is bluff. Notice that bluff does have two definitions as a noun. It can be a steep cliff. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, pretty close to some river bluffs, some bluffs that are just uh, right off the off the coast of the river. It's a steep cliff. Southern Illinois has a lot of them, too, where I went to college. A bluff can also be a lie designed to trick someone. So if any of you um, play poker or play a card game where you're encouraged to um, just tell little lies or, or to, uh, to try to fool people, to try to trick people, you would call that a bluff. The, there is a verb form of that, right? If I were to say something like, you're bluffing, it means that you're trying to trick me. You're lying to me. Notice that on your on your quiz, you'll see bluff used as a noun. As we look down, you've got 10 sentences to write, and you guys have gotten practice with these already. One thing I will say, just as we get some practice here, and I want you to do all 10 on your own this time, just as you get a little more independent with these. One thing I will say is try not to copy-paste sentences off the internet for these. It's not a bad idea to look up how these words are used in sentences, but I still want you to use them on your own. So let me demonstrate real quick. Let's look up adversary first. So let's. I'm just going to look that up. Adversary in a sentence. It's going to give me an example here on sentence.yourdictionary, I bet. 
He knew his adversary's overall military capability. He was a determined adversary of the Reformation, right? So there's some examples here. One thing I could do if I wasn't sure how to create my own sentence is take this one and modify it, right? Um, Marcus knew his adversary, his enemy, was good at sword fighting. I don't know, something like that, right? I used the, I used the sentence as a model and just replaced it with my own ideas. That's a good strategy for writing vocab sentences, but simply copy-pasting sentences off the internet doesn't tell me that you know what these sentences mean or what these words mean. Um, and I'm not fully convinced that they actually teach you what they mean either. So come quiz time, you might still be lost with these words if you're not actually practicing these. So take your time as you write these sentences. I'll leave you some feedback in your vocab as well, just to give you an idea of, um, of what's going well and what you need to, to maybe review a little bit more before your quiz. Best of luck and have fun as you write your sentences. Just as a reminder, I'll be quizzing you over these words in about a week and a half here.